I cover hundreds of tools and projects every month. I appreciate the effort behind all those tools because I know that creating something takes a lot of pain and a lot of effort, a lot of time and a lot of money, of course. But there are few projects which are backed by a deep philosophy targeting a real world problem. And then that is what it feels like when you go through the repo of Lightrag. Just imagine how they have described all of these LLM powered applications. They say LLM are like water. They can be shaped into anything from Gen AI applications such as chatbots, translations, summarization, code generation, and autonomous agents to classical NLP tasks like text classification and named entity recognition or NER. They interact with the world beyond the model's internal knowledge via retrievers, memory, and tools. Each use case is unique in its data, business logic, and user experience, and I couldn't agree more. And that is where this light rack comes into play. It brings in simplicity, modularity of the quintessential software engineering principles to this retrieval augmented generation. In this video, not only I'm going to introduce you to this light rack, which is an open source free tool, but also I am going to get it installed locally. And then we will create an end to end retriever pipeline with the help of this light rack, which is the purpose of this tool. In very, very simple words, what exactly this tool is trying to do is to build a pipeline, which will give us a structured output which then can be fed into LLMs or into your AI powered applications. And it takes care of the retrieval of the information and formatting of the information. What RAG does the retrieval augmented generation, it provides more context or data to our LLMs so that they become more aware, they become more grounded in our own custom and personal information. And that is what this light RAG is trying to make it simple. And because of this, the reason why it is trying to make it simple because the rest of the RAG tools in its uh, philosophy are quite complex. And they believe that no library can provide out of the box solutions for all the generative AI applications. That is why users must build towards their own use cases. And this requires the library to be modular, robust and have a clean readable code base. The only code you should put into production is code you either 100% trust or 100% clear about how to customize an iTrade. And I can already sense that cybersecurity guys all over the world would be loving these lines. Anyway, so Lightrack is born to be light, modular and robust with a 100% readable code base. And we will see it shortly that how easy, how quick, short, agile it is to create a pipeline with the help of this Lightrack. Before I show you the installation, let me give a huge shout out to our good friends at Mast Compute who are sponsoring the GPU and VM for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video description. Plus, I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on range of GPUs, so do check them out. Before we start this, we will be using OpenAI, so you will need to go to platform.openai.com and grab your API key from there. And that is a paid option. You would also need to go to grok.com and from there you would need to grab another API key. That is free. There is some limitation on the tokens, but I think should be good for this demo and your creation of pipeline. So make sure that you grab these. And by the way, they are also working on Olama integration and that should be available in some time. And then I'll do another video on with all of my integration. But for now, let's have a look at this light track because it seems quite interesting. And I think this could be a real game changer soon. Okay, so this is light track. Now let me launch my terminal. We'll be doing all the installation and stuff in our um, Jupyter notebook, but let's do uh, some housekeeping. So this is my Ubuntu system which I'm using and this is my GPU card. You don't need that much GPU VRAM which I have 48 GPU VRAM with this NVIDIA RTX A6000 because we'll be making API calls. So even you can even use it on 
good CPU, but make sure that you have at least 32 GB of memory. Okay, so let me clear the screen here. First up, let me create a Conda environment to keep everything simple and separate from my local system. I'm just calling it LightTrack with Python 3.11. So let's wait for it to get installed. Shouldn't take too long. And that is done. And now let's git clone the repo of LightTrack and I will drop the link to it in video description. I'm cloning the repo and then I am entering into that repo. And that is also done. Let me clear the screen. Next step, let's install LightRag with pip and some of the other prerequisites. And these are the prerequisites. And don't worry about the code. I'm going to put all the code in my blog and I will drop the link in video description so that you can simply copy paste. So here you can see that I'm installing first LightRag, then OpenAI, and then FireSwit is an in-memory vector store where we store all the embedding. Embedding means numerical representation of the data and then some SQL stuff and Grox API. Let's wait for it to get installed. Should it take look too long? And that is done. Let me clear the screen. Now, if you do lsltra here, you will see that there is a dot env underscore example. So let me quickly show you what that looks like so here because we'll be using our open ai and grok so make sure that you put in api keys for both here and then you can simply delete rest of it we don't need it so just keep these two and then sorry i think it just i pressed too many times so i'm just going to delete this one this one this one and this one and then let me paste my API keys here and then I'm going to uh, save it and exit from here. So let me put it and clear the screen. So I have saved my API key and I have exited. Another thing I have done, I have just renamed that env done dot underscore example to simple env. So make sure you also do that. And if I quickly show you that files now look like this dot env just okay so that is all good and stuff let me install this jupyter notebook let me run it it is going to install jupyter notebook and it will open the notebook in our browser so let's wait for it to start shouldn't take too long now and now it is going to launch it in our browser there is our browser let's wait for it to load let's do file new and notebook and let me make it that bit bigger so that you'll be able to see it more clearly okay much better so first up let's import this environment and then set up our environment by using the built-in light tracks own module that is done and now let's define our pipeline now this is a seems like a bit larger code but let me try to explain it as simple word as possible. First up, remember two things. In LightRag, there are only two libraries or two classes, component class and data class. And that's about it. It maintains no more than the two level of the class hierarchy. And this result design philosophy result in a library with bare minimum abstractions, providing the developers with maximum customizability and composability. So you see, we are defining this data class and then this component class. Component is to LLM task pipeline, but NN module is to PyTorch module. It is a base class for components such as prompt, model client, generator, retriever in LightRag. And so this is what we are defining here. And then the data class is uh, so sort of, for example, let's say PyTorch. In PyTorch, the data type is used in module and optimizer. And then in this one, data class is designed to ease this data interaction with LLM via prompt and to parse the text prediction, which is the output. That's about it. So data class handles the data, input data, output data. So first we are uh, giving this data class, which is outputting it. And then it is just taking 
some stuff it is defining some of the metadata that whatever is being passed brief explanation of concept in one sentence and then this is another example and then we have defined a template you can define the template as you like this is just an example and this is the component class is being defined for QA and you can just name it as you like but make sure that you define uh, your model we are just using llama 38 billion from grok you can use whatever model you like from if it supports grok you can use anthropic if you like and you can replace it with any other api which we saw in the .env file and these are some of the parameters which are very normal and then it is being called from here and then this is being called asynchronously so let me run this code and that should be done yep that is done all good let's move forward now and now let me run this and then you will see what QA looks like and remember we are trying to build a pipeline and a structure output of our data so let's run it so the question is what is LLM simple one it has gone in it has defined this question and answer and then it is telling us this is a generator this is a model this is a prompt template for the model and then we are giving it the instructions as what exactly needs to be done that output should be formatted as static json and you can of course change it as you like as per your requirement and then what we wanted to do that make sure to always enclose the json output and then this is our grox api which it is calling it has defined the full template and then there is output processor and there is this output you see from start to end from input to the processing of a template and output you have full blown pipeline which is which is showing you what exactly is there and that is what the beauty of this whole stuff is if you just want to get output then simply type here print output it is, it is just going to give you the output like this how good is that now if you just want to see the prompt let me show you the prompt here and let me remove this too because i was just testing it just type this and it is just going to show you the prompt there you go so you can not only display the full pipeline you can extract input you can just extract prompt and you can extract the output from there so not much fancy things are happening simple python construct and we have start to end we have built a pipeline on our data and of course i just gave it one line you can just feed in your text file you can use pdf files by con and then converting it to this data there are a lot of things you can do with it and as i said very very new project still evol evolving but i'm more than sure it is going to be real more flexible as the time goes by but this is just a starter i think i will be covering it more from different angles in the coming days especially when they announce the olama support and as i said i will drop the link to the code and you can just try it out by yourself if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel and if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching